what we do here is go back, 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 back. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another week of the Oldie Gaming Podcast. Yes, we're here two weekends in a row. Round of applause. Round of applause. Woo-hoo. Um, This week, as you can see in the title, and as you all know, it's been coming for a long time, Destiny 2 has arrived, and we are going to give you a little breakdown of what we think and maybe some tips and tricks, I guess, on, on what, what we've figured out is good ways to level up and all that good stuff. So yeah, that's all we're going to cover this week. I don't really know how long this is going to be. Hopefully, I'm sure we can talk about Destiny for an hour. It's not that hard. Right? It should be so pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right, but with me... I'm I'm old gaming, of course, and with me is Cano Crisco, who is still injured and not not on the webcam, but also Sharky and the Funky Bunch is here as well. And his mustache. Yeah, yeah mustache. and that beautiful mustache because he's a police officer and he can't have anything else like my beautiful beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyways, <clears throat> let's get right into it. I guess there's nothing more to talk about. Other than Destiny, because who wants to talk about anything else anyways? Um, Overall, I'm going to say right off the bat that I definitely got my money's worth of this game already, and it hasn't even been out a week. Um, Over the past two days, I've done nothing but play Destiny 2. So you could kind of say that I was pretty excited, and both the other guys were really excited as well, especially since E3 and, you know, the betas and all that good stuff and going off of the beta i understand why and i knew i I understood why there too but the the one thing not not the one thing the i I thought the story was short and relatively easy it was a good story and you know they added uh, uh, cinematics and everything like that so why don't we start off with talking more about the story what do you guys think about the story well, first there was a story. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, I don't know. I like the fact that they kept the the char- like the old characters that you know, by the end of the the full Destiny, like I would say like year three Destiny with the DLCs, you know, they kept the old characters that you came to know and love in that story and moved them over. But they like you know they weren't afraid to like create new characters and have you actually get like kind of invested in those additional characters even if. You know, even if briefly or or momentarily, you know, depending on what missions you're doing. And 
before before we get more into talking about the story, let's I'm going to throw a little s- disclaimer of spoilers. I will try not to spoil throw any spoilers in here, but if you haven't gotten Destiny yet and you want to you want to be fresh from it, you don't want to know anything that happens with the stories. I would say skipping ahead a little bit because we are going to be talking about the story and I don't want to spoil it for those who have not played it yet. So Yes. Yeah. Just make a note on like when we're doing this. Make a note when we stop talking about the story, so they can maybe click to like a jump link in the description. Michelle. So Sharky, what are your what are your thoughts on the story? You didn't play Destiny One too much. No. So honestly, I thought that like you said, the story was pretty simple and so like it wasn't really challenging, but it was still fun at the same time. Um, I thought the cinematics were awesome. They looked really good. Uh, just even like the graphics and like some some parts of the map, like just the I was too busy looking around at the surroundings because it looked awesome. Uh, I wish there was more to it because I felt like what because I I was done with the story mission like that almost that first night. I think I played like another hour the next the next day and I was done with the story mission. So I wish it was a little bit longer, um, to a little bit more to it. But overall, I thought it was really good and I'm, I'm excited for the DLCs and stuff like that, adding on to story, see what's coming and the raids and stuff like that. So, so one thing different with the story missions and basically like the entire game is you don't have to go to orbit anymore. So it made it, made it different as in you would have to go to orbit to start a mission where necessarily this time you didn't have to do that. Not only on the planet, but also going to different planets. You didn't have to go to orbit, but I think the biggest thing with the first one was you always had to go back to orbit at the end of each story mission. And that made it really like kind of clunky. Yeah. It chopped, it chopped what was going up the, the little bit of story that was going up anyway, any already it chopped up that little bit of story. All that. I don't know where I'm going with this. It chopped up <laughs> the story going back to the orbit and they really got rid of that with not, having you go to orbit, which may really make se- a lot of sense. And you basically, you go to a planet, you start the first mission, and then the next mission pops up on your map, and you can mark that, and you can either fast travel there, if you have a fast travel point. Usually you have to, the first time through, you have to run run to the next mission. Ugh. And then, yeah, it, which which was not the funnest, was running. Cause when when did you get your sparrow in Destiny One? It was pretty soon, like level Literally, five. N- not even level five. Like the one of the first things you did in like one of the first things you did in like one of the first missions is like establish a sparrow link. That was the yeah, first thing right. you did on every single map. Yeah, on every planet. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, so that was. I mean, the maps. I wouldn't say the maps were bigger. There are definitely some that are pretty small, like Io. The moon is super small map, yeah. um, with a lot of different li- different like your Z layer. So like up and down, there were a lot of different platforms and stuff like that. Um, what other? I maps? liked it though. I felt like I felt like the maps flowed really well together yeah. though. Like like one like I know I don't know about you guys, but like probably after a few days of playing it, and like once you get to the end game when you're spending a lot of time like in the worlds, like. It becomes very easy, even if you didn't want to necessarily fast travel everywhere, but like to know which way you need to go to like navigate the map. Came pretty easy. They had like pretty solid like landmarks and stuff for you to go to. For sure, for sure. Um, but going back to the story, I it was a lot easier to navigate through the story and everything like that. Not that Destiny One was too hard. It just, again, like I said before, it had that orbit whole orbit thing going to orbit after missions and well this one also had cinematics it had plenty of cinematics whereas the last one had like four ish yeah like there'd be like a random cinematic after a mission in the first one yeah and then after every mission on this one there was always a cinematic wasn't there Pretty much until yeah. towards the end you went a couple missions without a cinematic but yeah. for the most part it was after each mission. Joe. Um, what did we think about the actual story? They did a good job of having an end boss that was like, oh man, the, the world's going to end. Spoiler. The world it was going to end at one point. 
until everyone, you know, came back and spoiler killed the boss, which <laughs> obviously, I mean, there, there's, it's a, it's a, it's a game where you're light versus dark. So that's usually what happens is you kill the bad guy at the end. Um, but the, the main boss is Gaul. He's come to earth. He's destroyed the city that is by the traveler and he's trying to take the light from the city and you lose your light and after that you go through different stages and you eventually fight the boss and you murder his face which that was the only disappointing thing about the story that i have to say is i do think that gall was way too easy and really, the entire thing was too easy. And the reason I say that is because in the first game, you could play missions on hard and you could get higher experience and better gear from playing them the first time through on hard. And they did not have that. You always had to be, you know, unless you go in with a lower power rating, which I did for most of it, it really didn't affect it even that much. Anyways, you were still kind of trancing right, right through because i especially on my second playthrough because i've gotten now two characters who are have gone through the story i think it's been pretty easy even on the second one where i wasn't really hitting all of the side missions because there are also side missions on it to help you level up and i just feel like i skipped well i've skipped those and even under leveled and under power rating i still had a really easy time getting through it all yeah, I mean, the, with with the way the side mission stuff were set up, like, it was kind of convenient for maybe people that are a little bit less, I guess, skilled at, like, a first-person shooter, or maybe for the people that are playing by themselves, like, definitely kind of take it upon yourself to make the game easier for you by doing those side missions, increasing your power level before you did, you know, if the recommended power level was, you know, 120, it wasn't really, I would say, terribly difficult to get your power level to, like, 130 or 140 before you did that 120 mission. Yeah, so there, I guess, saying that it was too fast, if you did all of the quests, it would not have been nearly as fast, but then you would have been way over-leveled and probably way over-geared to where it would, the, the actual story missions would have been just, like, super easy because there were a plenty, plenty of side missions to do on each planet and they get they they weren't modest with their with their uh, XP drops and their their rating their gears that they dropped as well. No, they were very generous. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about moving into more specifics, not not story specifics, but like specifics of levels. And when I say that, I. It's hard to call what to, to say what genre this actually this game actually is because it's definitely a first person shooter, but it also has uh MMO where your loot system is, you know, you you have your uncommons, your commons, rare and legendary, which is gray, green, blue, purple, and then exotic, which is yellow. And that's how most MMOs go. But then again, I would even throw into the mix platformer because this game has a lot of platforming aspects to it. Like it's not just a linear. It, it is. It was pretty linear, but I mean, there was different places that you could go. But once you're in a level, it's pretty linear. But it's not just you know running through different alleyways, going left sometimes, turning right sometimes. There were aspects where there were different levels you had to jump to. You know, you had to go up. You had to go. You have to jump down. So there's even like a platforming aspect to this game as well and i love that and I, that's something that they took from the raids which predominantly had that from destiny one and implemented it literally everywhere in this game yeah like, there's a there's a lot of verticality to the game that's for sure anything else? i know i was gonna say at the beginning like at some point so like i couldn't you can't tell where people are and stuff like that and then you're like you have to kind of look up you're like oh there's a hole up there they all jump through the hole so i like i like it, it makes it a little bit more challenging especially if you're not used to that type of game because i'm i'm honestly i'm not i didn't really play destiny one or anything like that so it's a little bit different uh but there are some things i wish they did fix like some of the mapping and stuff like that so like seeing your fire team on the map 
and just not their name. Like I could see uh, Oldie's name and it looks like he's like right in front of me or whatever like that. But if you look at the mini map, he's nowhere on the mini map, but because he's like two continents away. Well, you can't see him on the mini map at all. They don't. They don't no. have markers on the mini map, which I I do agree. I think that's something that they should have. You should see where your fire team is on the mini map. There's no reason that you can see their name from you know three thousand feet away, but you can't see them on the mini map. So I agree with that. Dead silence. Okay, yeah. so are we are we done with the mapping and stuff like that then? Anything else to add with the maps? I do, do like kind of wish you, you could like? maybe set like a custom waypoint. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, that's that another too. thing. Like, you cannot do that. You can only set your waypoint to like missions and side missions and public events. Yeah, that's true. Because I, I feel get, like I didn't. Oh. I mean, I didn't always because I didn't always necessarily want to like do like the, the missions or the events. You kind of use them to your advantage, but. There was definitely times like I just needed to get to an area and I didn't really know where to go. And I think so when the, you say that is more or less the little lost sectors, which are places that you go to get a nice loot box, basically, and you fight yeah, some enemies. I'd to, yeah, I'd love to be able to set a waypoint like right on the entrance of that lost sector. Right. But I think that's the I, I don't know this. That's kind of weird. The, the whole lost sector thing is weird because they mark it on the map. But, and obviously you can't like click on the map or anything like that. You can't set the waypoint there. So it doesn't really make sense. I think that would actually have been better if they didn't mark those on the map. Like they only had, there, there, there's a symbol is what they use for it. And then when you walk up to the actual entrance, it has that same symbol on it. And I think that they shouldn't have even had those on the map. And it should have been something that you just kind of figure out. Yeah, as so as like you're going through the map, you just find it. So you don't. It's an actual. It's actually lost that way. Yeah, that makes more sense. And also, they brought in Destiny One. They have they have chests that you can loot and you get stuff out of, and then they have chests that you can loot one time. The gold chests. They also marked all of those on the map as well. Where I don't think in Destiny One those were ma marked at all. No, in Destiny, but in Destiny One, there was also a lot less of them. I yeah, think. it was like yeah, it was like one per section, I believe, is how they did it in Destiny One. But the thing is that you had to either look online or go out and find it yourself. It didn't mark it on the map for you, and I think that they that's something that should, they should have brought back into this. Yeah, I think they def they I, I feel like they were kind of shooting to make this game a bit more user friendly because I think a lot of I think it's probably pretty intimidating for maybe people who didn't really play the first destiny to like hop into this game and like try and like like you know for for me and you it felt probably pretty natural to like hop into the game and just kind of start doing stuff where Sharky maybe had a bit just a, sm a small learning curve but because mm -hmm. he had played some of it but you know for the people that haven't played it at all or even really heard of it you know it's a pretty steep learning curve to kind of understand all the game mechanics um, one positive thing from the mapping, though, is they made it so public events, if you know what public events for from the first Destiny are, they are basically events that anyone can go up and do. If you're in the same instance, you know, you'll have people that are in your fire team and aren't in your fire team, and they're you're all working together to basically beat some short term mission. It, they usually take like five minutes to do. And some of them are like, you know, defeating a boss or stopping these people from drilling and taking money from the ground or whatever. And that's what those basically are. And they marked those on the map, which makes it so much easier because in the first one, you just kind of had to either rely on the Internet where they had shady mark event, public event markers that weren't always accurate, but they were sometimes but you didn't really want to rely on them because, well, even relying on just driving around is what you basically had to do. And you just had to be at the right place at the right time. And that kind of got annoying because they would have daily challenges where you have to do three public events and maybe you are just having bad luck and you never get them. I liked on the map, too, how they just kind of go right off of that is not only did they add the public events to the map, but they added timers 
to yeah. tell you when they're going to start. And then also if they are started, like whether or not they're started, because yep. it kind of helped you prioritize maybe where you were going to go and which ones you were going to try and do. And they had quick travel. Most of them have quick travels that go right next to him, which is nice for a farming standpoint. And we'll get, we're, we're going to transition into end game here in a second. But the quick points, I, I don't know. I have a love-hate relationship for the quick points. I kind of wish they weren't as close to the public events as they are, but I'm sure if they were farther away, I'd be, like, annoyed. But, I mean, I don't know. I think you would have to – I don't know. I don't know. I can't decide on whether I like the quick travel. They're they're really nice and they're really convenient, but it's also, like, are are they too convenient? Did Did they make that too easy for you to just – you know, pop into that public event that's going on and get the last second glimmer or whatever you want. See, I think I think with that, they just need to tweak what makes you eligible for the rewards of that public event. Because I feel like I like I I definitely hate when those people who like literally didn't do anything in the public event they pop in at the last second they they shoot the boss twice and then get in, it, like. like Ingram, like an exotic Ingram, because they just showed up at the last second. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I feel like there should be, like, you should have to, like, do so much damage or, like, spend so much of a percentage of time, in, like, with the public event active. I agree. In order I agree, to get the work. it's... Shit, what was I going to say? <laughs> I totally, I had something good. I was, I had, I had a good point that I was going to point out, and now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's frustrating. Oh, though, because there like... are so there are so many. There are so many. So it's just like you you could easily get there before or like right when they start if you're really trying to do public events. There are so many, and they they're on your map, and they say when they can start and when they're about to start. Just just go and get there. That's why I agree. Because it's not hard. Not hard to no. participate. No, they're they're everywhere. The fast travel points are usually like right next to them. Minus a few. There are some that it's like a 30 second sparrow ride on to get to. I do. I do. I guess with the map, one thing I do have a, a quarrel with is I wish that they showed the entire map on the mini map. Like when you pull it up, like some like even in even in like the European dead zone, um, there's a section of the European dead zone that's like super north and west. Yeah. That you that you go to um, later in the, you go to it later in the story, but it's like, it, like when you pull up just like the, the regular mini map, like you can barely tell it's even there. Like there's a fast travel point there and everything and you can barely see it. Yep. And I always forget about it. I forget that it's up there. I remember one of the, the we were doing public event farming and Sharky is like, yeah, go to this one. I'm like, where, where is, where even is this? I don't even know what you're talking about. And he's just like top left. And I was like, oh, you can scroll up and go to there. So, yeah, I agree with that, too. That's more on the annoying part that you can't you should at least be able to like zoom out and zoom in with like left and right trigger. And mm -hmm. you should be able to zoom out and see the entire map and then zoom in to, you know, like a special a, a specific point if you want to. Yeah, it'd be cool to, if you zoomed in, too, because I know a lot of mini maps are doing it nowadays in games mm -hmm. where like when you zoom in, you can kind of see like even the verticality of the map. Like you can see like the objects, the buildings, whatever the case may be that like, it'd be nice to be able to like zoom in and maybe see like, Oh cool. Like these are like rock formations and stuff. Cause if you, I guess if you wanted to be like more strategic, that'd be a cool way to do it. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessary. It doesn't require that much strategy. Yeah. But it's not that necessary <laughs> for that. Maybe if it, no, no, I don't, I don't see that happening ever. Yeah. Or being that too big of a problem for it. All right. So let's, you got anything else to say on maps? Anything like that? No. Let's transition nope. into my, I, I don't know how I feel about this. The end game. So once you beat the guy, you're level 20, you beat Gaul, AKA Gary, and you're level 20 and you go back to the uh, public space, which is now called the traveler. You're not actually on the traveler, so it's not like it's 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 basically it's the tower again. It's not that big of a it's not that big of a a spoiler. There's two different social spaces. Woo. Um. 
once you're there, you get all the you get bombarded with like 15 different things to do. And it it has a pretty good system of looking at what you have to do. You just look at the map and then you press the left trigger and you it's, it has them all listed and you don't get too many. I mean, you get a you get a. You can get a quite a few if you know what you're doing. I like myself with my second character. I had like all 10 of them or something like that, a, a bunch of them to do, but. Um, they just, they basically help you get into the end game where you, you know, you're like grinding strikes. They tell you about the patrols. The patrols are back. Um, they give you quests to do that are light recommended. Like you have different, one was 120, the next was 140, then a 160 or maybe 200, 220, 240, 260 on each planet that you go back to and everything like that. And then you come back and you get a reward. And basically the... The travel is where also where the cryptarch is and the weaponsmith, which is completely different again. And what else? What am I missing? Bright engrams. There's another thing where that's cosmetic. Uh, yeah, and everyone, Bright everyone's engrams are like one of my favorite things about the end game. Yeah, I think so too. For me, it's exciting. I want to get an exotic uh, emote. That's all I want. But yeah, there's who else? Um, I mean, the sparrow and ship lady, she's there again. So everyone's there and you go there and it's I think it's I think it's bigger than the, the tower from Destiny 1. From what I from what I remember from the little I played of Destiny 1, it seems a lot bigger. Yeah, it seems bigger. But once you have it figured out, I mean, it's you're just running around and stuff and you know where everything is. I think um, there's more open. I think there's more space in it, but like. Yeah. I don't think it takes you any longer to get to Ikora in the on the traveler than it did to get to the speaker in the tower. Maybe. Yeah. Then and by and, and I mean, but then like when you get over towards like where Kate is, like there's that whole area with like the factions and stuff that isn't even really populated yet. Yeah. That like like that place could is, is massive. Right. But it's a lot of. I feel like there's a lot of dead space in the tower. Like it's it is big, yes, but like there's a couple of cool things. But for the most part, it's a lot soccer. of just like dead, yeah, it's like dead space. A lot of it. You can play soccer and there are goals and there's fireworks when you score a goal. And I bet you they thought when they made that they're gonna be like, oh man, so many people are gonna be in here playing soccer. No, no. one's ever over there. No one's ever over there. I don't no know. The cares. farm. There was a. There was always somebody over there. Yeah, playing. there was because the farm is a lot closer. There's probably a lot of people that don't even realize that it's there yet. To be quite honest, there's probably some YouTube video come doesn't... out. This is like sweet Destiny soccer skills, and yeah. they'll show it in the. It also line. doesn't really look like a soccer field. I would say I don't think it looks like a soccer field. You wouldn't know just running through there unless you saw the ball and kicked it over into the goal. I don't think you would know that there's a soccer field. But Even anyways, though it's futuristic, they should have outlined it a little bit better, like they did in at the farm. But okay, anyways, yeah. off of soccer. Um. So Endgame, my number one quarrel with Endgame is it's it's basically the same as Destiny One, where you grind out your blues, um, and then when you, those get to a max power level, and you can't can't grind those anymore, so then you start grinding into the purples. And the biggest problem with that is, is your blues max light level is 260. It's supposed to be 260. I've gotten some blues that are like 262, but it doesn't matter anymore because I'm past that. And then the max light level for most purples, the purples that you get from the Cryptarch, purples that you get from all of the people on the planet, all there, that's your technically your factions right now if you want to look at it that way all of those people and then the weaponsmith all cap out at 265 that's five light levels after and then when you want to get up to high enough to raid which is probably going to be like 280 what you have to use exotics how we, how there's a crappy way it's it's and the, and the other ingrams yeah and there there's another type of purple ingram that you get from completing hopefully weekly quests 
Um, yeah, so like those Cade quests that you do, the Cade quests that he gives you are like, that's a that'll be a weekly quest. So those you mission, have, you each have about blue three mission, or four opportunities. Yeah, you should have like three or four opportunities a week. To which I guess that's okay, but I mean, the raid comes out next week, and if I'm not ready for the raid, then I'm gonna be pissed off. I mean, those no those Ingrams though, if you think about it, those like enlightened Ingrams or, or whatever the hell they're called. Um, they actually give a solid amount of drops though. Like they don't just drop one item. They'll usually drop like two, like two purple items or like an yeah. exotic and a purple. Yeah. So you should, if you have four chances to get items, unless you get hosed and literally get, which is, there's a chance, but like, unless you get hosed and you get like five primary weapons and like two pieces of like chest or something, like you should have a pretty easy time using those instances to like boost your light level pretty quickly. But for those who have played as much as I have played, and I'm sure there are plenty of people so far, um, you do those for one or two characters, and you do get hosed, and you're not that high light level. Or maybe, like, my first character, I had no idea. I had no idea that those scaled, and the purple stopped at 265. So I, I didn't save them. I used them right away, and it hurt me in the long run, because now I have to do exotic um farming and then so so basically what that is is you find one thing that you do which the best right now is public events you just run around and do public events over and over, over and over and over again and you get exotic engrams and then you go to the cryptarch and you decrypt them and their max is like what 360 something ridiculously high um, and then you have to infuse them into whatever things you have now, and that also doesn't really work if you don't have the purple mod in your whatever whatever item you have. So there's also in each each piece of armor, each piece of wep each weapon, there is also mods that you can do, and those also have. Actually, I think those only have the two. They they only have the blue, and they only have the purple. Um, rating. Yeah, there's no like they. I mean, I'm there might be exotic mods for all we know. Yeah, we just no haven't got it. Yeah, who knows? Um, but right now you you like you absolutely have to have the purple mods in them, and I have two problems with that. One, you never find them, first of all, and two. You should be able to take them out of your armor. I think this is comparing this game to another MMO like Swotor. The the one thing when Swotor first came out and you had well not when it first came out. It took it took them like a little bit to convert to this. But if you didn't like the look of your the the piece of armor that you just got from a raid, you could literally take every single modification out, every single thing that makes that armor the the ratings that it has you could take the i think there are like five modifications that you can take out of the armor and you could put into literally any other piece of armor so say you liked this one you would just put you take it all out from the raid gear that you got from the raid and you would put it into your new thing and all of the bonuses would go tr would uh transfer over all of the um the set bonuses all as well would would transfer over and everything like that so it basically be like it was this piece of armor but it looked like this and not necessarily that it looks like this or uh, I'm not mad about what, it, what the armor looks like or anything. I just want to be able to take those mods out of the armor. I think that's a huge mistake that they don't have that. And, and it takes what 5,000 glimmer to put that purple mod into your gun or into your armor. It should take like 5,000 to take it out or maybe even 10,000. Like, Glimmer is in abundance for sure. At, at least for me, I have glimmer all the time, max glimmer. Yeah. And I'm just like finding ways to just throw the glimmer out. So I don't feel like I'm wasting a bunch of glimmer left and right. So I think that that's a huge thing that definitely needs to happen. You definitely need to be able to pull those purple mods out. Um, and you shouldn't buy them so light level 280. Yeah, yeah. Too, and you so you have to like struggle through this area of two I, I would say 265 to 280, which is a really hard struggle. 
And even yeah. then, I think it's even going to be hard to buy the purple parts. Like, I have stuff saved up and everything like that, and they're ready to go. But I still think it's going to be, you're going to struggle going through all that stuff and buying, even buying it. Because the mods, you only get them from random Cryptarch, or not Cryptarch, um, Gunsmith levels is the only way you get the the blue ones or the purple ones right now. And it's kind of not not fun. It's an annoying part of maxing out your light level and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Crisco? I I mean I feel like maybe the only reason they didn't have the mods, like the ability to take the mods out is because you can get them from the gunsmith. And if you think about it, like you're breaking down once you get to max level, especially like I think we're we're also in like this weird stage where like we've played the game for a while. We we put a lot of time into the game, but we're not quite to the point where like because I think once you eclipse that 280 light level, I think you'll see that like getting those mods is not going to be nearly as difficult as you think it is. Like you're going to you're going to have a lot more like what like parts that you're breaking down because like not every you know legendary item that you get is necessarily going to be good to, for infusing to other stuff every blue item you get from there on out is going to get broken down so i think i don't know i think right now we're also kind of in this weird spot where we're at like the harder part of the grind and we're also still kind of figuring out the mechanics a bit that i think once you do it more and i, I don't i'm not saying it's going to get easier but the raids are going to come out so there's opportunities to get really high level gear every week across multiple characters you're going to have all those like missions that give the luminous um, Ingrams and have like the night falls and then bring in the clan, you know, get a clan where everyone's kind of actually like working together to like level it up, get the Ingrams associated with the clan. Like, I think you'll see that it's going to be easier to upgrade than you think, but I definitely know where you're coming from. Like I get, I do get irritated when I get a gun that I really don't like, but it's got a really good mod in it that I would like to have in a different gun. That like you just like I'm gonna break it down anyway, so you know it'd be nice to just be able to pull that mod out so I can actually put it on a gun whose like stats I actually like. It's just crazy how long like literally it, it's a grind because I felt like I flew all the way up to like 260 and stuff like that, and then now I'm at 277. So between 260 to 277 it seems like it's taken me like two days to get that just that 17 points. So I think I that's know. that's a really good point. It's. I feel like I flew through the story. I feel like I flew right up to you know two sixty five, and now I feel like I haven't since since then since the first what like two days. I feel like the first two days I was two sixty five, mm -hmm. and since then I'm only like two seventy now. And I feel like it's just happening so slow. That grind is so bad yeah. that it's I mean not. It's not proportionate. With what, how I experienced the rest of the game. I mean, think back to um, when we got back into Destiny, though, off of the Taken King. That's exactly how it was, though. We got to the point where the Ingrams, we you know, we bought the Ingrams from the vendors to get us up to like, you know, three fifty or three sixty, and then we had to grind up to three eighty five, for, you know which or no theirs was a they had theirs was structured a bit differently i think um the maximum level was like three or was what 400 i think i think there though you just had more opportunity maybe maybe i'm just getting ahead of myself here and there's just not enough things for me to do during the week because i don't necessarily like the whole exotic grind thing i think that's the biggest problem for me is i just don't want to sit there and do public events over and over and over and over again i want other stuff to be able to do to get that and in destiny one i feel like there was a lot more things not necessarily like i think it, I, I feel like maybe the strikes is the difference here then because there were so many different strikes that you could do and you could do them at the highest level that you could and that's how you got the exotics. That's how you got the higher leveled things to level yourself up. I think that's probably what my problem is. Yeah, is we're, just, we're, we're also jumping from, I mean, because like we were playing Destiny relatively recently, you know, yeah. probably within the past like six months that I think we're also in, in a kind of in this stage where we're comparing a three, a three or four year old game that had plenty of time to like 
hit its stride and like and and more not not just hit its stride but Come develop content. content yeah because like because if you remember like this is exactly how destiny was when we first got it like there was literally like three or four strikes you ran them non-stop that was an even more broken leveling system at the time like if you remember the only way you got to max light was to do the raids as opposed to other opportunities but i mean if you think about it you get three characters i feel like that should be how you get to max light though is through the raids i i i wouldn't i would be i would be more okay with the the raids still doing what the original destiny did which is drop like raid gear drops at max level because you've got to be like close to max level to even be in contention to do the raid that like you might as well reward the players for for doing them but i also think if you've got players who have really good rng like i mean we had friends in the the original destiny for the first atheon raid that they were done we literally like they were literally done raiding or like they still we still raided together but like they were max light level after like one raid if they had good enough rng where where now it's just i think they're trying to they're trying to encourage players to like play the game like have a bit more longevity in playing the game but i think we're we're also like we're not even through the first full week when like a lot like most of that end game content's even coming out yeah because me and shark well me and sharky we've been talking while we were just on that quick little hold is like they're going to be introducing um like faction wars where like Mm -hmm. you know you they're going to bring those factions back i guarantee i guarantee you if you get a certain amount of xp for that faction or like you complete certain tasks for that faction you can get a luminous ingram like i think there's going to be a lot more opportunity to level up than you think they just we have to get through this first week of like yeah we just have to get through this first week of like really annoying grinding with with low content to get to that point also to now that we know like how we should have leveled things up like looking back on it like we would have all saved our luminous ingrams for when we hit 265 specifically knowing that was where we'd be because we'd all be up at like 275 like right away i haven't even done those for like three mission three three uh planets yet i don't think two no not just not not the blue missions i'm talking or the orange missions i'm talking about their missions no not not those there's literally like like the Cade missions and stuff that you do. Like the reward will say like powerful gear, or like the Nightfall where it says like complete the Nightfall strike. The reward set because it tells you what you'll get for completing each mission. And those those missions, the reward is powerful gear, and that's a luminous Ingram, which are the scalable Ingrams. Aren't the blue ones like that too? Or those? No, those are the exotic for exotic stuff, right? the the blue missions yeah those are it seems like those are typically giving you the ability to start some sort of like exotic weapon quest yeah which that's that my only major major tiff with this game is they they changed it in destiny one and i don't know why they didn't go back and change it in this game because it worked out so well was you used to have those exotic weapon quests and they do in destiny one two what they originally did in destiny one which is take up inventory spaces for like your heavy weapons or your you know your special weapons or your primary weapons like i've got two i've only got nine primary weapon slots and like not that i personally am like a huge person who like switches out their weapons all the time for like different situations i got my auto rifle that's pretty much all i use um but i lose two inventory slots to these two weapon bounties that like i'm sure i'll get around to completing but like until then it's really annoying to to lose inventory space for them right and especially because the heavy weapon one is that the, you do it you do the first step of it and the next step is wait for the raid is basically what it says it's just wait for the raid yeah and but like and, and even still i mean there's a lot of like little things that i kind of like i look at where destiny destiny one ended and where like where this game is like it don't like it almost seems like they kept developing destiny one with like in regards to like i don't know if you've looked at like the vault or like your bank like the bank looks the way it did in like vanilla destiny where it's just like two panels or three panels but like all of your stuff goes in the same um all of your stuff goes in the same like bank spot where where by the end of year three in destiny like 
you had like an armor spot, you had weapon spots, you had item spots, like everything was segmented where, where they kind of have gotten away with that or gotten away from that. Again, it could be content related because I know a big reason they did it in the original Destiny was because after three years, you've got a billion exotic guns. You've got a bunch of exotic armor. Like there just wasn't enough space in the bank. So maybe at this point it is a, a volume thing or a content thing. But like, it's just like little things like that where like it worked so well in the first game. Like, why didn't you just make a quick change and put it in this game type situation? But... Um, do we have anything else to add? Is there something positive we could say to end end the stream? I think the game's awesome. Yeah, I mean, the game like, is definitely awesome. Like, for for as much as like, I don't want people to mis misinterpret this as like a negative right. review. I think this is coming more from although we're like casual gamers, like we were pretty hardcore with the first Destiny outside of Sharky, like. I, like we just we noticed the little things that they changed and like maybe didn't implement or the things that they changed that we don't like because we liked the way they were in the first destiny but still a great game this is a different game, a game so i mean should we right. be complaining about that no but what's what's the saying um if it ain't broke don't fix it yeah ain't broke Bungie. Like it's just it's just it's just little things, but like like none of it's game breaking. Like I I have yet to experience a game breaking glitch, um, it, and like for putting probably already an embarrassing amount of time into the game, like I have yet to have I have yet to reach a point in the game where like I just like the game like freezes and crashes and I can't yeah. play for like a couple minutes. That's never happened. Multiplayer servers are a little bit slow, but that'll take time. I get it. It's cool. They need. They do need to bring back the, the ability to choose your own multiplayer mode, but that's about it. That's my own. Like, it is a great game. I think we're just we're antsy to do all the end game stuff, and it's just not there yet. We all should right. do a, a revised. We should do a revised review next week. Yeah, I was just about to say that actually, like, Sharky. Like, you're. We can't hear you. He's got stuff to add, guys gotta say stuff but yeah well i think we will we won't spend an entire episode i mean we've been up for 50 minutes now so that's not too bad um but we will definitely next week we will come back we will revise it because there is what what's all releasing this week um the raid mm -hmm. for sure the raid we'll have our second go at like those weekly events for the better yep, year weekly events um they should be hopefully adding back in factions this week yep Kind of see how that plays out. Ideally, Zer would be back this week too, and Zer yeah. is obviously a huge. Although I have yet to see any sort of like, like strange in Destiny One, you were getting stra yeah, like well, like you were getting strange coins from the very beginning, and everyone was like, "What the fuck do you do with these things? Like they're just taking up an in like a bank space." And oh, like and then like and then you learned like I have yet to get like a currency that I like because there's I mean for the record anyone who hasn't played it yet like there are like a million currencies in the game because yep. there's so many different like upgrade tokens or like or reputation tokens for each vendor um it seems very confusing at first but it's really not but like I have yet to get any sort of like token or like item that like I don't like that I look at and I'm just like okay like well what the hell do you want me to do with this because I really don't know I wonder I don't know yeah I'm kind of I'm curious to see what they're going to do with Zer. Isn't it? Isn't he coming out on Thursdays now? Zer's day. Oh no, we lost Sharky. Yeah. Da, da, da. And Adam back. Welcome to the Old Gaming Podcast, where we have. Technical difficulties oh, every week. I'm lucky every number 13. Oh, yeah, this is also episode 13, so All it was right. bound to happen. It was bound to happen this one because if you believe in luck, you also believe in unluck, and that's 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 13 for we whatever so reason. Close. Yeah, we were about to wrap it up here, and Sharky decided, hey, we're going to break the... We're, we're going to continue the streak. For some reason, this, head, this headset, if I'm don't talk for a certain period it like completely shuts off and i can't get it to turn back on like on the talk computer more talk i know 
Well, you guys are talking. You guys are so long-winded. Nothing I can do about that. Just cut it off. I just had to complain, okay? <laughs> yeah, I see that. But overall, I think this game is going to be good, so in the long haul, so I'm excited. Yeah, I just, I think my biggest problem is I want more content, and it's honestly, if you think about it, it should have all come out the same time the game comes out, but I understand why they give you a week to do everything, but I, I just think that that's unnecessary, you know, because it was, it was so short. It was so short. The story was so short. Getting to the end game was so short, and... Right, but if know, you what? think about it, like if if three eighty is the recommended light level for the raid, like two, we're barely going to be two eighty. I was like, good god, not three. Yeah, yeah. If, a... But like if two eighty is the recommended light level for the raid, like we're barely going to hit two eighty this week. I bet. Yeah, like I, I like need three more week, points. Like, like it's going to take like, I think if like the reason they break it up and the reason I'm okay with it is because there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces um, as far as like, like how the gear works and like learning how to like, inc like increase your light level that like, if you automatically like threw in the raid and all this stuff, like you'd have so many players like knew what they were doing that maybe were playing with people that mm -hmm. didn't and, or, or just people that don't know what they're doing. Like they, they look at it and they're like, I don't even like, I wouldn't even know how to like get to this, like this supposed like 280 light level. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. But a week? And you're going to all of a sudden, I, I guess, uh, I if mean, you play the, as I much mean, as I do, uh, as much as we did, you'll understand in a week. But right. if, you're, if you're more casual and you haven't even beaten the story yet, you're still going to be like, well, I have no idea how to do that. And, and I mean, and there, I mean, there are definitely people that have played more than us that are probably eclipsing well over 300 right now that are for just sure. like ready, like ready to go for this raid. But like we also have like jobs and like things that we have to do not to say that those people don't but like well maybe most of them the, it is their job like king Fallon, yeah, probably, and professor bro man darkness 429 dr lupo all those people they just play destiny for a living because they're on twitch and they make money twitch chat talking to you where are you where is everybody <laughs> <laughs> uh. anyways yeah that's. I there was one more thing that I wanted to say, but I guess I'm just having problems remembering what I want to say today. Um, positive notes. Get the game. It's super fun. Yeah, it is super fun, and you won't regret it. I'm talking to you, stun a kid seventeen. If you're out there ooh, watching, ooh. join us. Get the game. Get the no game. Yeah, this this is your review. Yeah, this is your review, buddy. It's all you now. <laughs> but again, I'm, he's going to watch us. And, I feel like he's going to watch us and be like, wow, they just shredded this game for like a Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. He's like, from what it How sounds like. How do they even like, like it? It sounds like they hate it. No, it's the, it, it's the most enjoyably frustrating experience of your life. At least we can say this. It. It's not the division. Yes, true. God, love that game, but hate that game with a pet. See, that's More another hate. prime example of a game, though, that like had a lot of like aspiration when it came out, missed the mark terribly. And then over the course of like the next two years, they added like four DLCs and changed the way the content works. And it's beautiful. <laughs> that game is actually really fun if you go back and play it now. They just lost their entire fan base because they didn't. Yeah, they the, it up at the beginning. Yep. Like, well, like the dead zone was a cool concept, and then like, it sucked because because of cheaters. There was a really long time where they were just cheaters all the time. Like you literally like, shoot them like a million. Like it was bad. Like they figured out how to glitch like infinite health and like, oh, yeah. it was so frustrating. But anyways, this is a Destiny um podcast, Destiny review, not Division. But we aren't just comparing it to that. De this this is way better. I would say this is better than Destiny One as well. I would um, say better than better than vanilla Destiny One. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how it goes in 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 time to come. I kind of don't feel like this is actually Destiny Two. I feel like this is like almost a 
revamp dlc to destiny one honestly like one like 1.5 yeah, like, if you've ever played, I know I always go back and compare this to SWOTOR, but SWOTOR has done this multiple times. Like, it's the same thing of what Destiny does, but they just didn't give it a new name and they didn't make you pay $60. It was just a a new patch. Like, they've, they've changed the, how the tree system works, if you know what I'm talking about with the tree system. It's like your um, passives and stuff like that and you know you unlock certain abilities and if you're a healer you're a dps you're whatever they've your changed that tree. yeah your talent tree that's what i was looking for they, they've changed that like five or six times and that's that's pretty much like the biggest difference between destiny one and destiny two is is you're not leveling up your subclasses your you, you have talent trees and you just put talent points into those subclasses Ooh, and you can switch in between. Yeah, we need to talk about that. About. That's a huge, uh, like, that was a huge positive thing yes. to do because in year three of Destiny, I still was leveling up one of my subclasses, which is stupid because it would, ju it would just take so long. And, like, I quit for a really long time. And when I ca eventually came back, the, the new subclass was out and I had never touched it. And literally, I just sat there and I played and I played and I played and it just, I never maxed it out. I don't even think my, um, no, my other two are maxed out for sure. On my, on my, uh, Warlock for sure is maxed out. But I don't think my, my Titan's not maxed out and my Hunter is definitely not maxed out on no, any yeah, subclasses. Huge, huge, huge plus. Like, so for anyone who didn't play the first Destiny, they basically gave you this, you had a, you have a subclass, so you have like a super ability. Um, generates periodically, but then within that that super ability, they have I don't know what would you say maybe like thirty different like yeah. spheres within the subclass, and they're all and you have to unlock them in in a very specific order. There's no way to change that. There's no way to to modify what order these perks and and, and upgrades are on, are I guess redeemable in. Um, and what you do then is once you get your class fully upgraded, which takes a really long time. Very. You go through then, and you can like pick specific orbs, um, to kind of tailor that class to more of, I guess, your play style, for lack of a better term. Um, it's very time consuming. I know whenever I would start like my second character or like another character, because I probably had deleted and recreated my third character with different classes about three or four times. Always kept my two hunters, but rotated out the other two pretty or the the other one pretty frequently. Was Every time you delete, like created that new character, like you had to level up each subclass, and unless you dedicated all of your time to that player, like it was going to take a really, really long time to get that subclass leveled up. And now it's it's a lot quicker. You don't really notice it, and truthfully, just kind of by playing through the campaign and then maybe spending three or four hours, which is not that long, like three or four hours maybe in the end game content you should end up with enough upgrade points. And truthfully, you can do it before that if you do the side missions, but yep. you should end up with enough upgrade points that you can fully upgrade Every single each of your subclasses subclass, yeah. like right away. Which honestly, though, isn't really that ne ne necessary. I pretty much going through, I knew like what, what kind of grenades I was going to do, um, what kind of jump I was going to do, and my your your new class ability, which is... Uh, shield for Titan. I don't know what it is for the Hunter and a healing. What or... are you guys even talking about? This new? I know like the, I know that the Titans have shields. The Warlocks do a healing well or like a, or a damage well. Like, yep. How do you how do you activate that skill? Hold B. Hold B. Hold B. Oh God! And if it's I'll up, to... it'll activate. I don't know what the Titan. I don't know what the Hunters do. I haven't even looked at them yet. Truthfully, didn't know that you could do it. So well. Here's me, 20 hours later. I'm never with you, dude. I haven't held B to do anything. But we I did, like, did you get prompted at some point in the story on, like, how to do it? So? Yeah, I don't know if we ever got prompted. Look it up real quick. I know Sharky's right. on it already. I'm going. Because um, I don't know. The Hunters have, like, a dodge move that's really effective, and I know the Warlocks kind of have it, but I don't know if you guys, like, 
But anyways, going going back to the talent tree, you have those three things, and really the only thing that's that you have to like sit there and read through the talent tree and decide, okay, I might change, I might select this section and I might select that section, is like, it starts off with your melee ability, but then it also goes to a bunch of passives. Like the the way it looks is, um, you have the the B ability on the left. You have grenades on the top, you have your glide on the bottom, and on the right side, there's two sections of four squares. And you choose one of those, like the, the, the first one is unlocked at, I don't know, level five, level eight. I, uh, yeah, it's level eight, and you choose one, yeah, and it's either, it's either your melee makes it so you reload faster, or your melee recharges your grenade. Um, And then... There's another one that's unlocked at like level 10 that then is an, a different passive. Like once you kill someone with your melee, this happens. I don't I don't really I can't remember what it one. Could, and then like it'll it could be, be different. It could be something where it's like like an, a melee kill in this in this particular tree will like instantly start the regeneration of your shield. Yeah, or something like, like that. Like it's kind of weird stuff like that. Like so, and then a lot of times there's by the time you get to the fourth one, the fourth one's usually a modification to your super. Yep. Um, like I know for the hunter, like for the night stalker, I know that's the one that's the class I tend to use the most. Like one of them makes it so that if you like miss with your tether or if you're trying to set a trap for enemies, you can like shoot the wall, and then when the enemies walk by, the tether will actually like spring out at them as opposed to like having to hit someone with it. Um. And then the the effects just last for a lot longer. Where the other one is called Quiver, and it gives you six shots, so you can land six different tether spots, but they're just a lot lot shorter right. um, on the tether. And the reason I'm bringing those up is because that's really the only thing. Those those eight are really the only eight that the the only two different things that you're going to change in your um in your talent tree because. You can only select the top one or you can only select all of the bottom one. You can't like switch like you'll want the first one or the top one, the second one or the bottom one. It has to be all the top or all the bottom. And that's that's really the only thing that you're going to go back and forth through. You're not going to switch your glide. You're not going to switch your your B, your healing or your shield. Maybe you will just depending on what game mode. You, like if I you're, think if you will, if you're rating, you're gonna make. If you're rating, you're gonna make everything much more. Like like I personally, if we're doing like regular PVE, I use the quiver because I like having six shots at like their instant kills. If right, you hit but that's that's your that's your the right side. That's not that's not the other. I'm I'm just saying that like the only thing you're going to be switching is that thing the the four oh between those four on the yeah. sides but not anything else. Like you're not going to switch your grenade more than likely. You're not going to switch your B more than likely. And you're not going to switch your glide more than likely. Yeah, so you could really get away with, you could get it. What I'm trying to say is you could get away with what, what it would be like 33 points to max your character on what you want it to be. Like you don't even have to get all, you don't have to unlock all of those things. No, with those but you points. will, you just, you get enough points easy enough. Um, but yeah, but like, but I mean, I don't know. When we were doing the nightfall, I switched my my void grenade because that void because the void wall grenade is really really effective for crowd control when they're like rushing you. Yeah. Um, but it's really ineffective when you have like a burn on because it's such a thin damage area mm -hmm. that if an enemy runs through it and they don't die running through it, like they're still going. So I switched it to more of like the void grenade, or I'm sorry, like the the void or, like Nova grenade where like it's more of a sphere of a void so that enemies end up getting more like trapped in it, I guess. Um, but yeah, definitely for the most part, like, and even still, I think even since then, I've like forgotten to switch that back to like the void wall grenade. I've just left it the, the vortex grenade for the last like two days. So ours is just for hunters. It's just dodge. That's all it is. Like Warlock gets Healing Rift and Empowering Rift. Titan gets Towering Barricade and Rally Barricade. Then Hunters gets mark Marksman Dodge and Gambler's Dodge. What do they do? Um, so, the Marksman's Dodge is... Is that the one that reloads? Yeah. Yeah, so it reloads whatever weapon you have equipped. So it's really effective for the times where you need to put a lot of DPS down on a, like on a boss with like rockets and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you can basically... 
shoot like like i use it for a lot with my grenade launcher where you'll you know you have a big clip of like six or seven grenades you launch all seven of them in a row and then you just you just dodge really quick and then your grenade launcher is reloaded and then you just unload another seven so like it's really effective for for like dps type situations the other one the other one just empowers you no the the other other one one charges your it recharges your melee that's That's shit that's no, good no, in it's, PvP. It's, it's actually really it's really useful um in certain like if you if you do use the night soccer class actually it's really useful because you have to be kind of close to an enemy to do it but g- generally if you're dodging you're probably close to an enemy anyway. Um like the night stalkers one of their melees it like makes you go invisible. Mm-hmm. Um so it's nice if like you had just used it and you're like really in a tough spot you can like dodge throw it down and then run away. Um it is significantly less less useful though than the reloading dodge, that's for sure. All right, that's I, I'm glad we ended on a positive note. Again, I can't believe we almost I can't believe we almost forgot about subclasses. Yeah, that's I know like we most... we did almost <laughs> forget about it. That's a little out of context. That should have came like like second Way... after we talked about the story. But see, whatever. I think it's something though where you once you find like not everyone likes the same subclasses like. Like I played most of the story with the golden gun because I I like it. It's I think it's a fun subclass. Like where Justin he was like it's like oh like it feels like nice to have my night stalker class back. Like it feels like I'm playing Destiny again. Like so like everyone has it differently. And truthfully, kind of once you find those classes you like, like you don't really change very much unless it's like a burn or something, like a like a particular burn on a strike or whatnot. All right, so that was Destiny. Um. Tino, we're waiting for you to purchase it. We're we're uh-huh. we're sixth. The, we yeah, the sixth. The clan is it's, waiting. It's time, man. How many we do we have? Yeah, we do. Well, we already have six, but I don't know how much um, John is gonna be countable for raids. Raids. He hasn't really played too much. Yeah. yeah I don't know about Justin done. either because he's doing his police academy thing, but we'll see. No, he's done with it now. Oh, He'll be on. He just he just finished it. He's he's got to take his written exam, I think, at the end of the month. So he might be kind of MIA till then. State test. But, yeah. yeah. State we test. Same see. shit. We're gonna have same to shit. find. Also, if you can, you uh, ask to join a clan. I'm sure you can ask to yeah. join a clan. Yeah, yeah. We created a clan because that's another. Before we get into the end game of our of our stream here, um, that's another thing they added was clans. Our clan is Vintage Fish Lube, aka the VFL. Um, uh, the the story behind that, that name. No, it sounds awesome. What are you talking about? No, it's just funny. <laughs> it is. It is meant to be funny. We um, since we three did the do the podcast together, we wanted to make a clan for it. So if you want to find us, um, look up Vintage Fish Lube, and if you if you really look into the name. You can tell that I'm oldie, so it's vintage. That relates to vintage. Sharky is a fish, even though... Yeah, Shark's technically a fish. And oh, yeah. Lube is kind of like Crisco. So that's how we came up with the name. <laughs> um, we're extra clever, I know. It took us... We texted about this for like four or five hours. And then when we actually got into the game, we're like, all right, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And we finally got through it. And that's what it's going to be. So... I, I would hope you can request for anyone who, yeah for I'm anyone sure who, who, for request for anyone even still if you just want to like make your own clan with like your friends I first of all it's never been more accessible than it is now like in in Destiny 1 it was a pain in the ass to try and go and like create a clan and join a clan this is very accessible it's very easy to do and the rewards for there was no rewards for joining a clan in the first game in this one they're going to do Similar to a lot of other like MMOs, they're gonna do like seasons. Um, so you're gonna have so long to rank your clan up, and then once you do, you get bonuses based on whatever your clan's rank is or your yeah, like your clan's reputation is. Um, which actually it seems like could pay off huge in the long run if you get your clan to a high enough rank. Yeah. So join our clan so that we can all share in the uh, share the in the loot or because everyone is a looter. Fuck or create your, or create your own clan and be lame. Everyone's a hoarder. That's what it is. Everyone wants good loots. So join our clan. 
Which you actually can. When we completed the Nightfall, we unlocked a, an Ingram for our entire clan. I think we just happened to be the only three that were in it at the time. Yeah, we when, were. When you do the when you do the really hard events with your clan, everyone in the clan gets an Ingram for it. As long, I believe the stipulation is as long as half of the fire team is part of your clan. Yes. Yeah. As long as long as you get the marker in your clan section, and like the clan menu, as long as you get the um. Like the note, like the marker, like the check marker filled in box or whatever. Everyone in the clan will get an Ingram for that instance. Mm -hmm. What day Which does the raid come out? Convenient. Tuesday. Thir yeah, Wednesday? 13th. Tuesday. What, what day? What day is the thirteenth? Well, Tuesday sure at midnight. Technically, in two days from now. Today's Wednesday, so, so Wednesday. So Tuesday night. So is I don't think come it out comes Tuesday out Tuesday. Does it come out Wednesday at mid or Tuesday night? No, it's I it said ten a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Okay. So so yeah, be, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. That's what's going to get me through this week is raid. We'll probably try it. We probably won't beat it though, um, especially because the other two don't usually get on until 10 p.m. Eastern time. But you know, all that's this, okay. all this week I'll be on at like three. I get off at three all this week because I'm at training. Nice. We still got to wait for Candle mm -hmm. Crisco though. Oh, yeah, that's true. Sorry, guys. It's okay. Sorry for bothering you all with my friendship. All right. Um, Tomorrow, this is going to go up on YouTube. If you're watching there, thank you for watching. Um, If not, you can catch us on Twitch. I'll be streaming again this week. Probably every day it'll be Destiny 2. And I'm, I'm going to do some RuneScape. I'm going to, like, RuneScape on the side. I probably won't put that on the screen, but... I'll do some like AFK fishing and stuff because I'm already missing RuneScape. But anyways, <laughs> that's our show this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week with more news. We'll we'll br we'll bring the news part back in into this, but we knew we were going to spend we're almost at an hour and 15 minutes on this. And then we'll we'll let you know what we think about Destiny and everything like that. Yeah. Nice. Let's go. Let's go out. See you guys.